How many times have you received data from someone or even out of a system and had to manually change it in order to use it properly? For example, data like this, where there are empty rows and multiple columns for the values. This simply won't work when trying to create analysis using pivot tables. And it's best practice to get your data into a tabular format from the beginning. One tool we can use to achieve this easily, the next to no coding is Power Query. And in today's tutorial, I'll show you how to achieve this mainly only by using Power Query's user interface, which makes it super simple. If you'd like to follow along, I've included a link to the Excel file in the description below. I'd also love to hear in the comments how you've got around your own data formatting issues and if you've ever used Power Query to do it. Now, let's head over to the laptop and take a look. We've got eight tabs in our workbook. Each one is in the same format and has, represents a different location. Each table has got a table name that reflects that location. Our first job is that we need to get all of this data into Power Query. So we're going to come up to data and then across to get data. We're going to click on that and come down to launch Power Query Editor. That's going to open a new window, which is the Power Query Editor window. On the Home tab, we're going to come across to New Source. Click on that and select Other Sources and then come down to Blank Query. That's going to open a new formula bar. We're going to type in here equals Excel and you can see the IntelliSense has come up with a list of options. We're going to choose the first option, Excel.CurrentWorkbook. Press Tab and then open and close the parentheses and press Enter. That's now going to create a table with a list of tables in it. If we come across and have a peek into one of these tables, you can see at the bottom here that it represents the tables that we have in our workbook. We don't need a name column as we have the location in the table themselves. So we're gonna click on the name column and press delete. That leaves us with just the content column. We're gonna come across and we're gonna click these two arrows. This is then going to expand the data. It's gonna come up with a new window and it's gonna show us all of the column headers that exists within those tables. We're going to uncheck the use original column name and press OK. Now, this has appended all of our tables into one table. So we have London at the top, then we've got our next table, Winchester, followed by the next, Bath, and so on. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to select our location column. We're going to come up to transform and we want to get rid of all of those nulls. So we're going to come across to fill and then we're going to select fill down. That's now going to put a location in each one of the rows. The second step we're going to do is come to our GL account and we're going to split this. We want two columns. We're going to have a GL account number and a GL account description. If you come up to the split column, we're going to split it by digit to non-digit as the digits come first in this instance. That's going to split it into two columns. We're just going to expand that formula bar because we're going to rename these two new columns that it's created. We want the GL account kept as the first one and then we're going to change the second one so it reads GL description and just press enter. Then as you can see we've got some nulls in here still and we want to get rid of those so we're going to come up we're going to press on the filter button and then we're going to deselect null. Press OK. That now means that we've got data on every single one of our rows and there are no blank or null rows left. Now, as you can see in the GL description, we've got these funny hyphens still left in there. We're going to take those out. So we're going to come up to extract. 
and we're going to extract text after delimiter. Then we're going to press the hyphen and then space. And that gets rid of that. You could have also done that with the replace values if you wish. Now we have full rows of data. We want to unpivot our data. And what I mean by that is we're going to have a column for each type of data. So for example, we're going to have a column specific to location, another one specific to GL account and description. And then when we get to the data here, what we want is we want a column that's specifically for the months and then another column that's specifically for the values. First off though, we've got a total column that we need to get rid of because we don't want that kept in our data set. So we're going to select that and we're going to press delete. We're going to come back across. We're going to select our first three columns. You can either do this by selecting them individually by holding control, or you can select the first one, come across to the last, hold shift and press left on the mouse. Then we're going to right click and we're going to come down to unpivot other columns. So it's going to keep those first three the same, but it's going to unpivot the others. And there we have it. We've got our data as we wanted with a column specific for month and a column specific for values. So what that's done is it's taken a wide data set and it's made it longer. We're just going to rename the column name of attribute. We're going to change that to month, press enter there. It would be nice if we had another column that depicted whether it was revenue or cost. And we can do that by adding a custom column. So we're going to come up to add column and across to custom column and click on that. We're going to name this GL type. And then in the formula bar, we're going to type a formula. We're going to use the if statement and include the text.start function. So text.start, open the parentheses, and we can use the GL account in this instance because it's currently labeled as a text column. So double click on GL account, then comma one. That will return the first digit of that column. So in this instance, for that first row, it will return a four, and we know that all of our revenue columns start with a four and costs start with a six. So if that equals four, and we need to put the four in quotation marks because it's currently a text field, then revenue else cost, and then we can click okay. And what you can see is that's now added a new column into our data set and anything that starts with a four is labeled as revenue. And as we scroll down, as we get to the rows that start with a six, it's now labeled that correctly as cost. We're now going to change all of the data types. In order to do that, just select a cell and press control A. That will select the whole data set. Come across to transform and you can see here we've got detect data type. If we click that, Power Query will try and detect what sort of data type it needs to apply to those columns. You can see that for location, it's selected a text data type. For GL account, it's now selected a whole number data type. For month, it is selected a date data type and then in value it's selected a decimal data type but in this instance we're going to change this to currency we're going to replace the current before we load our data we're going to rename the query so we come across here just select that and rename to PL. press enter now we're going to come across and load our data back into excel 
to come up to close and load and close and load to. If you select close and load only, it will by default load your data back into Excel on a tab in a new table. So close and load to two. We are going to select table and we're going to select new worksheet and press OK. And as you can see now, this has loaded our data into Excel in the exact format that we required it. How easy was that? And what's great is that now, with a click of the refresh button, this process is automated. Once you become familiar with the user interface, you can start amending and generating your own M code in order to achieve even more functionality. If you found this video useful, then please give it a like and consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.